Running back Melvin Gordon is now a free agent and a possible signing option for Philadelphia. The Eagles are going to wear their black helmets not just on Sunday, but for two more games after that. And the NFC playoff picture, are the Cowboys or the 49ers a bigger threat to Philadelphia's number one seed and the playoffs in general? I'm Thomas Mott. This is the Thomas Mott Show. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show on a Wednesday. We are getting ready for Eagles versus Packers on Sunday night football, but need to jump into a headline that I think is maybe a non-story, maybe a semi-big story, maybe a massive story, not quite sure, and that is signing free agent running back Melvin Gordon. Now, this comes to me via a lot of comments down below in yesterday's video, talking about, obviously, uh, you know, Jordan Davis's injury update, Dallas Goddard's injury update, and some more stuff. Be sure to go ahead and check that one out. And a lot of you guys are asking, Thomas, the Broncos just waived Melvin Gordon. Why should the Eagles, or why, not, why don't the Eagles go out and get him? You talked about needing a running back. Well, let's answer that question and break it down here today. So as you see here, Yahoo Sports, among a bunch of other news outlets, has the story. Broncos wave leading rusher Melvin Gordon after another fumble in loss to the Raiders. Side note, the Broncos season has been one of the worst things to watch in recent NFL history. The disappointment from the high of Russell Wilson to the low of being, what, 3-7, and seven, crazy where they are at. Here is the write-up, though, quote, the Denver Broncos uh, wave running back Melvin Gordon III on Monday, a day after a costly fumble and a loss to the Las Vegas Raiders. Gordon has struggled with ball control in 2022. Fumble was his fifth of the season. Former Pro Bowler with the Chargers, Gordon joined the Broncos in 2020 and was a regular starter. He started in six of the ten games he played in this season, tallying a team-high 318 rushing yards, along with 223 receiving yards and two touchdowns. His 3.5 uh, yards per carry is a career low and a steep decline from his 4.5-yard average in 2021. Gordon shared the backfield last season at the start of the season with Javante Williams, who the Broncos selected in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft. Williams tore his ACL in Week 4 against the Raiders, thrusting Gordon into a prominent role. And so, obviously, you get the look here that Gordon was fantastic last year, was thrust into the starting role, and should have gotten a lot more touches after Javante Williams went down, and yet the numbers have been in a steep decline. Now, the argument here, obviously, is the fact that he's playing for the Denver Broncos, whose offensive line has been terrible. The offensive play calling has been really bad. Russell Wilson has been horrible. There's a fun stat out there right now. If Denver had scored more than 18 points in every single one of their games this year, they'd be like 9-1 and because their defense is that good, but their offense is atrocious. And you see here, through the first 11 games of the NFL season, it's been, you know, rough sledding for Melvin Gordon, right? You talk about 12 for 58 was probably his best day. I mean, talk about an opening game against Seattle, and then nothing more than 15 touches, 10, 12, 3, 15, 3, 11, 9, 7, 8. Like, there's just not a lot here in terms of being productive. Now, yards per attempt is the real question mark here. Is this a result of Gordon kind of falling off, being the fact he was drafted, you know, back in 2015? Or is this the result of a bad offensive line? Last year, he was very productive. I mean, talk about 203 rushes for 918 yards the year before, 986. It's not like he has been unproductive the past couple of years. This seems to be the year where the decline has either started or it is an outlier year. But now the question rolls to does it make sense for Philadelphia? Well, first off, they would have to go ahead and put in a waiver claim for him, and Philadelphia has the best record, meaning they're at the very back of the waiver claim. And so the odds of no team submitting a claim for Melvin Gordon are... I should say it's very, very slim. And so right off the bat, the odds of Philadelphia getting him is, is next to nothing. However, I would make the argument that he would be a nice addition to this Philadelphia Eagle backfield. Now, mainly due to the fact that I don't trust Kenneth Gainwell or Boston Scott. Now, for whatever reason, Shane uh, Steichen does, because you saw Boston Scott and Kenny Gainwell get a lot of clutch carries, especially Scott on that final game-winning drive where he got like three in a row. It's like, where's Miles Sanders? He's clearly your number one running back. But I do think that Gordon was probably, honestly, better than Scott or Gainwell. Now, the question then becomes, do you bring him in right now 11 weeks into the NFL season and kind of disrupt this running back flow that they very clearly have worked very hard to establish where it's Miles Sanders' job and then they mix in Scott and mix in Gainwell albeit to very little success but still you get my point so I like the idea. I don't think that it's the worst thing in the entire world, but I do think Philadelphia has some other running backs on their uh, you know, practice squad, most notably Kennedy Brooks, or have we mentioned Trey Sermon's name since the Jacksonville game? Mm, no, he hasn't gotten a touch since the Jacksonville's game, who I think could just be elevated, and then you solve your problem without having to go out and sign somebody like a Melvin Gordon. So, again, when it comes to things like this, the headline's up there, oh, Philadelphia, they could sign Melvin Gordon. They could. And I'll get a lot of comments saying, Thomas, this is stupid. Why would they? Well, those are people who didn't watch the video and listen to the show all the way through. I'm against it just due to the fact that I just explained you have Sermon, you have Brooks, you have other people who can carry the load. But I do think that, hey, 
it wouldn't be the worst option in the entire world. The odds of them actually getting him on the waiver wire, though, are slim to none. So, hate to break your bubble there or burst your bubble there. Not looking good for getting Melvin Gordon. And maybe by the time you're watching the show, he's been claimed by somebody else. So, what are you going to do? Okay, we're going to get into the Eagles' black helmets that they're wearing with their all-black uniforms this weekend. Coming up in just one second. First, how do you feel about Philadelphia getting a big win against the Packers on Sunday Night Football? They're undefeated in primetime this year. And if you want to win some extra money with our friends at DraftKings, click the link down below in the description box where it takes you to this TFM page with my beautiful face. And look, I'm wearing the exact same uh, you know hoodie that I have uh, on in the picture. All you got to do, sign up using our, the DraftKings link. You just click right there. And then deposit $5 plus, then you bet a Five plus dollar place a five plus dollar bet on the Eagles game this Sunday night uh, in terms of the money line, and if they win, you get two hundred dollars back in free bets. That's two hundred dollars in addition to your winnings. Bunch of you guys have had success with this as Philadelphia has only lost one game. So if you want to jump in on the sports betting landscape, do it with our friends at DraftKings. If you're in a legal state and of age, click the link down below. It takes you here, and just follow the instructions to sign up. You will not be disappointed because DraftKings to me is absolutely fantastic. Love their UI. All right, let's go to the black helmets. This is fun. We've been waiting. been 11 weeks. Like, where are the black helmets? Well, they are officially coming out as Philadelphia has put out an Instagram and a Twitter post, and Bleeding Green Nation has the write-up here. What's kind of glossed over on the social media is that you're going to get them not just Sunday night, but for three of the final seven regular season games, right? So this week, according to Bleeding Green Nation, the Eagles will debut their new black helmets. So we're bumping this post. The Birds put out a little hype video for their new look, which we will not watch. This, this excuse me, is the post that you want. Here's your look at it, right? The black and then with the black helmets up top. I got to see these up close in person when I was at the, at the link a couple of weeks ago for the Jaguars game. I'm going to be very honest with you. It's okay. Now, the black idea is great. I don't like this very glossy black with a lot of the kind of silver sparkles in there. I think a black that matches the uniform would have looked a lot better. A matte black with the eagle wings would have been... Mm, absolutely delicious. However, that, uh, you know, what are you going to do? It looks good. Now, the green helmets are arguably the best, and you don't want to go black the entire time. But I do think wearing them for a couple of games is great, and I think they're going to look really good, really clean uh, in that home night match against the Green Bay Packers. What I did not realize is that even though they revealed the alternate helmets back in January, we didn't know when they would debut the look, but now we know they're going to wear them for a lot. So according to the NFL's official Twitter account, Philadelphia will, will wear them Sunday night against Green Bay. They will wear them Christmas Eve at Dallas on Saturday. That's a Fox matchup at 425. And then in the Week 18 matchup against the New York Giants, which might have big-time playoff implications, might not. We'll see where Philadelphia is at. So you learn something new every day, right? You get an actual look at the final three games of the regular season that I didn't really think, or the three or three games of the regular season, that I didn't really think was going to be an actual thing. So it's going to be good. I like the black helmets. I just want to emphasize, as I try and pull up a picture here of these black helmets, it's really shiny. It's a shiny black, right? It's not as black or matte black as I would have liked, but again, they look good. I'm not going to complain too much. They're going to be fine, but they are going to wear them Sunday night, and that is really, really good news and should be a bunch of fun. Thumbs up for the black helmets. If you guys think they should go more black helmets in the future, you know, maybe throw in the Kelly Green alternate uniforms, let me know down below. Uh, and while you're at it, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. As I got plenty of shows, despite it being Thanksgiving, despite me going home for Thanksgiving, we will still be doing shows for you guys that way when you're sitting around on Thursday, nothing to do, you know, you're bored, tired of your little annoying cousin wanting you to play Madden for, you know, the eighth straight time in a row, you can watch my show, so be sure to subscribe for that. All right, NFL National Story of the Day. We always wrap up with the NFL, not just Philadelphia here on the Thomas Mott Show. Here is your NFC playoff picture after Week 11 with a big 49er route of the Cardinals at Estadio Azteca in Mexico yesterday. That is significant because with the Seattle Seahawks off this past week, the 49ers holding the tiebreaker would be the three seed in your NFC West champs if the playoffs were to start today. You see on your screen right now, especially on the right side there, Philadelphia is one. The Minnesota Vikings, despite their loss, would be two, and the Niners would be three. Now, this this is interesting, right? And I think that this is worth noting. I would much rather Seattle be a wildcard team and the 49ers be a division champ than vice versa because that means the 49ers would be ranked lower, giving them a higher percent, higher probability of playing Philadelphia in round two. And again, I, I try to emphasize this. This is if it were to finish today, Philadelphia is your one seed. They get the first round by. If they do that and they are the one seed, they play the lowest winning seed, aka the worst team. It doesn't really mean that, but lowest winning seed. So had the 49ers lost, they would have been the seventh seed right now. And then you have 49ers going to the Vikings in the first round of the playoffs. I would like the 49ers in that one. And if the seventh seed wins in the first round, they're guaranteed to go to Philadelphia. Setting up a matchup I think is unfavorable for Philly. You don't want the 49ers. I think the 49ers are peaking at the right time. The CMC trade was 
a, a, a lot. I mean, it was a lot to give up, but it's worked out really well. They're the team I'm most afraid of besides the Dallas Cowboys right now in these NFC playoffs. And so you want to play them last. You want to play them in the NFC Championship game, not in the division round. So you kind of want the Niners to stay at this three seed or maybe even climb to a two seed because then a two seed is guaranteed to not go to the one seed in Philadelphia, at least in the divisional round. And then regardless, they still come to the link for the NFC Championship game. Now, this does mean that you get a higher likelihood of playing, you know, the Cowboys there in the divisional round or the Bucks in the divisional round. I would think the Bucks are a favorable matchup. And I, listen, you got to play the Cowboys eventually. And so you might as well get them out of the way early in a very fun NFC divisional round playoff matchup. So I, I, I've been up and down in the nine this year, and I think that Jimmy Garoppolo is still this kind of Kirk Cousins-like figure. You know, he goes as far, the team goes as far as he can take you. But the problem is Jimmy Garoppolo wins in the playoffs, whereas Dak Prescott doesn't. And so I think my whole idea of the Niners being a lot better than I realized is starting to shift for that very reason. Defense is playing well, despite a lot of injuries, and they're very talented to me at the skill position. I definitely think the Niners are a little bit more scary than I originally had thought. But hey, the NFC playoff, I mean, there are a lot of good teams. And you can make the argument for the for the AFC quickly as well, right? I mean, Dolphins are a two seed. Tennessee runs the football very well. Buffalo and Josh Allen. I think that right now the NFC playoff picture is a lot tougher because New England we know is not that great. And the Ravens look terrible against Carolina. But still, it's going to be a fun matchup. And this is why Philadelphia needs to win on Sunday night. That way they maintain their number one seed and keep building and padding that lead. That way you don't have a thought of being a two seed and potentially playing, you know, a very talented seven seed, whatever it may be. All right, there you go. All time we have for on this Wednesday edition of the Thomas Mott Show. Plenty of great stuff coming up. Again, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. A lot of you guys miss out on my show. I can look at who watches this show. A lot of subscribers don't. We have 6,000 subs here, and sometimes 6,000 people don't even watch. So make sure you guys subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. All time we have for. See ya. 